cruncher is one of my favorite still water searching patterns, especially if Calabatus nymphs are active and on the trout's menu. Powered by a slow five to six turn hand twist retrieve coupled with prolonged pauses on either a floating, midge tip, or hover line, the UV cruncher has provided some memorable days for me across western North America. Be sure to have these materials on hand so you can add a few to your Stillwater fly box. So let's tie my UV cruncher, a variation of the popular cruncher that is so common to the fly boxes of any Stillwater angler in Great Britain. It has a number of variations and I like to use it particularly when I'm fishing Calabatus emergences, but it's a great searching pattern. Into the jaws of the vise, I've placed a Daiichi 1550 uh, wet fly nymph hook, a number 10. I tie these in 10s, 12s, 14s. First step is applying a good thread base. I'm using MFC 80 in chartreuse. This will have a little chartreuse head at the front of the fly when it's done as a hot spot. Um, You can also use a fluorescent orange or your standard black or olive uh, tying thread as well, depending. Some days they like the hot spots in different colors, some days they like just the standard uh, coloration, so it's good to have a, uh, a number of different variations on hand. And you can see when I tie this fly, there's tons of uh, material opportunities here. The tail and hackle of the fly just comes from your standard Indian cape. They're very cheap. Uh, this is a uh, furnace, uh, sorry, a red brown. Um, you can also use a furnace and badger are great colors to use as well. So from the, the cape I've stripped, uh, to, removed rather a, a single uh, feather and I'm going to strip off some fibers off the side to form a tail. I've removed the fluff and get to a section of the feather I like which is usually the middle two-thirds and I'm just going to stand those fibers up by uh, to even the tips by standing them vertically grasp a section and just gently tear the fibers away and if I've done it right I should have a nice gathered section and I want to tie that in so I have a tail that extends back about half the shank length very sparse remember this is probably most representative of a, of a mayfly so you don't want a huge long tail so I get a couple of wraps on there and if I'm not happy I can always grab both ends and sort of pull but that's uh, that's okay I like that too and you can always once you get that secured in come back and then actually carefully throw a thread wrap underneath I often like to do because you can see it kind of splays out the tails a little bit. And then we'll just take the tying thread and advance forward to about the two-thirds mark, securing those fibers down the shank, provide a nice smooth underbody, and then simply lift the remainder up and, and trim. This fly has a rib, and you can use wire. Uh, in this example, for a little flash, I love using Mirage Opal. This is the size small for this number 10. I'm just going to offer this up to the side of the hook. A couple of wraps over top to grab it, and then secure it down the side of the shank. This helps get it positioned for the first wraps. Just let that hang. For the body, Again, this fly is nothing more than really, in basis, a glorified pheasant tail. Uh, we're just going to use some pheasant tail fibers for the body. So just like I did with the hackle fibers, I'm going to take a section of probably 8 or 10 fibers for this number 10, stand them perpendicular to the stem so it evens the tips, and then come in with my scissors and trim them off. I'm going to reposition the fibers in, the, in my uh, left hand here. I'm going to trim the tips even to ease tie-in, secure them back to the base of the tail, and then quickly advance using open turns right up to about the two-thirds, three-quarters point. 
And I'm going to cover the hook shank with a little bit of super glue. I'm going to let it sit for a second so it gets tacky. And this will help bind and hold the pheasant tail down. And if I have to slip my grip because of the tacky nature of the glue, there's a good chance the whole body won't unravel and you can grab it and finish the job. So we're just going to counterwind this. So we're going to come up. One wrap at the base of the tail and then just start winding forward. We tied those fibers in by the tips so we get the natural taper of the fibers working to our advantage to help form a nice tapered body. I'm just going to come up. A couple of wraps to tie off the material. And then a few more for luck. Come in with our scissors, trim away the excess cover up the residue. And we're just going to take our mylar rib and start spiraling forward nice open turns. This isn't really for segmentation, it's just a little bit of a attractive flash if you will. I'll just wind that forward. Secure back. And that's tied off. For the thorax, you could use a small amount of dubbing. Uh, the original uses peacock curl. I'm going to use some of this UV Brill that we pick up from Canadian Llama Company. This is the UV Olive. I've taken a section. We're going to tie that in right in front of the body. Come forward. I'm just going to start winding this around the shank and with every wrap if you can get in the habit of sweeping those fibers back. You're just going to form a little thorax. Come in, tie off those materials, a couple on top, a couple in front, trim off the excess, you moisten your fingers a little bit, sweep those fibers back. And there's our little thorax ready to go. And from the same Indian neck, uh, sorry, Indian cape, I have stripped a smaller sized hackle. I want the fibers to extend if I was to sort of preen these out. See how they're going to extend about no more than three quarters of the shank. So we're just going to literally strip off the fibers at the base of the stem, the flue. I'm going to tie that in wet fly style with the shiny side of the feather facing the front or facing you. Just get that tied in right up to the eye of the hook. You can trim away the excess stem, being careful not to trim away our thread. Just cover up that loose end. Now that the hackle's tied in, I'm going to take the feather and make a half turn to position it. Make sure it's facing shiny side out. Attach my hackle pliers and then just start forming a hackle right in front and sweeping those fibers back with each wrap so that they flow back over. Right up to the thread. Two to three and four times should be max. Keep things sparse over the top once twice. And I'm actually going to take the remaining fibers, feather, sorry, the remainder of the feather, my apologies, and come in and just wind back to start forming a head to lock that in. And then if I'm pulling down on the thread and I snap forward, that will break off nice and neat for you. And all it's left to do is simply build up a nice neat head and apply some cement. So we can come in and kind of pinch that Hackle so it flows back, further exposes the eye, build that up. Again, a little oversized is fine because it's going to be a bit of a hot spot. And then we're going to take some UV clear fly finish in the flow formula. And I'm just going to brush that directly onto the tying thread. it hanging there and let the thread carry that right where it needs to be so that 
that hang. And we're just going to come in with our whip finish tool. One, three, four, five. Use that to further finish off the head. Come in and trim. I'm going to cure the UV resin, the flow in this case. I don't know whether that shows up on camera, but that fluorescent head just lights up. And there you have it, the finished UV cruncher. Tons of variations on this fly. Tons and tons. You can further sweep the fly, the fibers back by pinching them like this so they flow. You, again, you can vary the body color, the color of the pheasant tail. You could use another quill fiber such as a dyed turkey or goose. You could use traditional peacock curl. You can vary the color of the UV brill. You could use dubbing. And of course you can vary the hackle colors, red, brown, as I said earlier, furnace and badger are some of my favorite combinations. But there you have it, the UV cruncher. An excellent exploratory pattern, particularly when calibatus nymphs are on the menu. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online Stillwater Fly Fishing Shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. In addition, you can also follow me through my social media channels, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.